Yes. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. Spencer Conley from the band Living Dead Stars. Living welcome. Dead Hello, Stars. Hey, Ridley, thank you for having me on. So, uh, first of all, how did you come up with the name? Well, actually, the the band name was uh, something that uh, our singer, uh, Manuel, had come up with um, a friend years ago uh, when they had started the band. It was um, it was in honor of a friend of his who had died. Okay. Um, him and his, uh, his old drummer, Robin, I think, had uh, come up with that back in 2016 before uh, I uh, joined on board with the project. Interesting. That's cool. At least there's some meaning behind it. Don't, no, don't definitely. mind my phone. You put that on vibrate. <laughs> um, now, uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought here. He just woke um, up from a oh, nap. Where where are you guys located? <laughs> um, technically, our our main location is Los Angeles. That's where we're based out of. I actually live in Huntington Beach, which is you know just south of there. Um, but the band is kind of uh, scattered across the globe. Uh, it's it's kind of an odd setup, basically, and uh, it's a bit of a long story into that. So what happened was back in 2017, uh, Manuel, who's a singer, he was uh, coming back and forth between uh, Los Angeles and London. He was living in London at the time. Oh wow! And I had uh, I had sort of started my own project, which was uh, I guess uh, a little bit of like a hard rock, heavy metal. Uh, project where I had written a bunch of instrumental songs and I needed a good, you know, a good strong rock vocalist to sing over it. And um, it's just tough finding committed people in Los Angeles. It's weird. There's there's no shortage of musicians and vocalists, but it's just really hard to find people that will actually commit to something long term. Yeah. And um, so we actually met on band mix and uh we started chatting because he was actually in london at the time and then he was on his way to la so when he came to la we met up but right before he came i had sent him the tracks i was working on and he had this band living dead stars that unfortunately right before we started talking the band had kind of broken up so to speak uh, basically there was just some some stuff had happened between bandmates and they all kind of went separate ways right and manuel was left holding the band project and uh, so he, he wanted to write stuff in this vein, the more heavier sort of uh, this kind of Avenged Sevenfold, Stone Sour, uh, Five Finger Death Punch sound. And um, he was looking for, you know, band members that wanted to commit. And as well, too, he, his, his dream was to bring, you know, eventually move the project to Los Angeles and, you know, uh, tour in the United States. And so I was really cautious about, okay, uh, you know, he's... he's coming from London, he doesn't have residence here in the U.S. right now, this is uh, going to be a little tricky, uh, but I sent him the tracks, within a few days he'd sent them all back, he'd already recorded lead vocals and harmonies uh -huh. over them, and I'm like, I got more done with this guy in a few days than I had with any singer in Los Angeles ever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, then he's, there's a commitment there. <laughs> yeah, and then so when he was actually here in L.A., it was like just the writing process was like lightning. We we sat down, we finished the songs we were working on, we wrote a bunch of new ones. And, um, you know, I'd already, I'd already had been scheduling time in the studio. I was going and recording guitar parts and working with the bassist and drummer, and then he came in, finished the vocals, and... Um, it unfortunately the project you know this was 2017 things got delayed quite a bit uh, just with the back and the forth and um, we finally we finally finished recording and mixing this was last year 2019 uh, we didn't get it published right away because we had we'd been talking to different um, record companies and trying to get uh, you know some kind of deal uh, and we ended up getting getting a deal with payment entertainment which was great and so when we had ready, it took, you know, even more months to publish. So finally it got released in uh, March this year, right? When, or not March, that's when the single got released. But April 3rd is when the album came out. Okay. But that that was right when we were in the middle of tour and right when COVID-19 hit the world. And, right. And uh, the, the second half of the tour got canceled. And so all of our momentum kind of hit a brick wall right there. Yeah, I think everybody's momentum hit a brick wall in March. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, what can you tell us about this single uh, that we're going to be playing tonight? Uh, the single, In Pieces, correct? Yes. I just want to make sure that's the... Okay. Yeah. 
Um, well, this actually, I would say this is probably the apex of what Living Dead Star Sound is, because a lot of the material was uh, stuff that I had been writing, and then songs that Manuel had been writing, and we kind of just refined them when uh, when he was in L.A. But what um, uh, this one is one that we actually sat down and wrote together, like from start to finish. So um, he had uh, he had been wanting to collaborate with uh, Max Georgia from Falling in Reverse, who uh, plays uh, the lead guitar and the solos on that that song. And um, so Max uh, was in L.A. at the time, and I think he might live in L.A., I'm not sure. Mm. But he was in L.A. at the time. I was uh, I had a day scheduled that we were going to be recording. And so um, Manuel, of course, was friends with him, and he passed me his contact. He's like, hey, hit him up. So uh, we talked about it, and he was uh, you know, up for doing it. So he came in and um, laid down some really good solo work, and then we filmed a, a video with him in it as well. Cool. And... Uh, yeah, so it was it was a really good collaboration, and um, it's it's just the whole thing with you know tours and the whole music industry basically being suspended on hold. It's <laughs> a lot of yeah. a lot of momentum and promotion we were putting into this. It all just kind of came crashing down. So on your tour that you were on that ended up getting canceled, how many shows were you able to actually play? Um, let me check for you. I know we played, I think it was about 20. I've got the flyer wow. right here. So, um, the first half of the tour, this was throughout the UK. We played with, uh, we opened for The Calling. Okay. And that was, uh, from, let's see here, February 6th all the way until February 23rd. And we played a total of 15 shows, uh, with them. Wow. And then and then we did two more shows after that. We did um, one in Calais, France, and then one in, uh, in what was this? It was in St. Johann in uh, Austria. And so the, those were ones that were just kind of ones that we had booked as Living Dead Stars. So we basically did about, yeah, it was about 17 shows. And then we were supposed to meet up with Anvil. Uh, we were gonna uh, join their uh, European tour and they because they had been doing a uk tour as well right after we had started our tour with the calling gotcha and uh yeah that all just uh i mean we every you know everybody when you're on tour it's like no let's just keep going we right, <laughs> want right. momentum. but then it's like nope borders are getting closed right airports are, are grounding flights and yeah. then finally we get a call from the tour manager and he says hey guys we have to cancel the rest of this so yeah Unfortunately, we didn't even get to play a show with Anvil yet, but it's postponed. We still got like we're still on the ticket. It's still going to happen, but we got to wait until all the lockdowns are done and then right. reschedule the shows. Yeah, and we're all just kind of wondering when that's going to happen. Yeah. I know, I know, businesses are starting to open up and you know things like that with you know limited capacity and like half their what's the word I want half capacity. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be interesting to say the least and see how things open back up and when shows can start again and bands can get back out there touring again and, you know, so people can, you know, go enjoy the music and support you guys. Absolutely. It's, um, you know, one thing, too, though, it's it's definitely forcing us and a lot of other musicians to, you know, get much more tech savvy and get mm -hmm. into a the live streaming aspect of it uh right. which i mean being being that the band you know our um our other two members uh john our bassist and our drummer um ash they actually live in the uk as well and so uh you know when when the band's actually together we do the rehearsals and stuff but we've had to do a lot of the writing and recording and then like you know sending files back and forth um with with all of that so we're, I mean, we're already, you know, savvy in regards to, hey, we've got a Google Drive, here's the files, but now it's, we got to get into this whole live streaming thing now yeah. that we can't, we can't even, like, you know, fly out to LA or fly out to London yeah. to work on the real now. No, absolutely. Uh, now, when you did the video for this song, uh, what was the, what was the best part of it? What was the worst part of it? And how much fun did you have? Um, I would say the best part of the video was was uh, preparing for it because uh, the whole writing process, the recording process, went very smoothly. We had a blast with it. But um, 
when it came to shooting the video, it was uh, hmm. It, we we did we did the shooting over a period of two days, and we did it in different locations, and it was just uh, a lot of miscommunication. Oh, it, no. it got done, and it turned out fine, but um, you know, certain certain people who uh, were supposed to be helping us with video and stuff, uh, you know, didn't make it to one of the the shooting days, is and so. We were able to get the footage we needed and put it all together. And when we were working with Max, everything went fine because that day was everybody was where they needed to be. We had everything set up and ready to go. But uh, you know, just the other day we were filming, it was some certain people didn't show up and certain people kind of dropped the ball with it. But oh, but it's I mean it's all right if you can if you can take uh, I guess all the broken pieces and put them together and make something good out of it, then that's uh, that's ultimately what art is. Right. No, absolutely. 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 Essentially, that's what the song's about in pieces. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Uh, now, mm -hmm. once again, everybody, uh, this is Spencer Connolly from the band uh, Living Dead Stars joining us on the show. And uh, before the whole shutdown and everything, uh, what was what was something you like to do in your downtime? Uh, my personal downtime or downtime with the band when we were on tour. Personal tournament. downtime. Okay, uh, that's a difficult one because uh, pretty much all my time I spend either practicing or I'm uh, working on something. Because uh, I I technically self employed. Right. I mean, as of right now, we're all, we're all kind of out of work. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I I worked in uh, in you know I worked in live sound as well as I worked in graphic production. So I would say what I've been doing lately in quarantine has just been working on. Uh, graphic design again, getting better with it, and learning 3D animation now. Because, uh, God, I mean, hey, the music, the music's great, but when when we're all stuck in quarantine, we can't make any money off of it. Exactly. And right. you know, a lot of my money came from teaching music lessons and doing live sound. So, um, okay. as much as I love love those professions and want to get back to them as soon as I can, I gotta I gotta have a backup for when this sort of thing happens. No, that, yeah. so, that makes sense. It's not definitely just sharpening skills either with music or with uh media all right now cool. um do you drink uh i used to a lot <laughs> okay and back then what was your drink of choice oh man it was either it was either tequila or i used to drink a lot of sake wow interesting uh, well i was tequila or gin i uh i like uh, if I'm gonna shoot anything straight, it would be tequila. But it, if uh, if I'm making like a cocktail or something, I'd probably go with gin. Yeah, we're all but, about uh, tequila. <laughs> <laughs> but last last couple of years, especially when it came to uh, you know getting serious about hey, make a band work, get an album recorded, and then as well too with um, uh, you know just life changes, getting married and everything, been drinking a lot less so. For me now, it's just a good dark stout. Nice. 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 I don't drink beer. Mm. I don't like beer. I've tried it. I've tried a bunch. I've tried craft brews. I've tried a bunch of different beer. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's hit or miss with beer. There's some great <laughs> ones, and there's some not so good ones. Absolutely, there is. Absolutely. Um, now, while performing, what is the worst thing that has ever happened to you on stage? Um, hmm. I would say probably the worst is just equipment not working, and that's that's probably a pretty common thing with um, with uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, we had this we had this, this show that we did in Saint Johann in Austria. It was actually a really good sized venue, and we had uh, had you know a great size audience, a couple hundred people, and we had uh, you know we, we were filming it, so we got some great footage. But like one of our one of our like most heavy like upbeat songs. Like the song starts off, and while I'm getting, we all got my guitar in, in our ears, and but then I watch the footage back, and I'm playing, and there's no sound, and oh, then no. you see you see the sound guy running behind the stage and like plugging something back in. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh, so we're on stage rocking like here and everything perfect because we we have an in ear monitor system that uh, we use for our wireless headphones. Okay. Just so you know, we've always got signal. We can hear each other clearly. Sure. Plus, we have uh, backing tracks that play for like the the violins and the synths that we recorded. 
And um, so that was working perfectly. So we're hearing each other just fine, but something went wrong with the, the feed going to the house. And <laughs> so I'm up there rocking this heavy intro, and you can't you can't hear anything. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, until horrible. drums come in, so I don't I don't know if the audience could could tell something was wrong, or I mean I'm up there doing this and there's no sound until the drums come in, and then the sound guy runs behind me and then plugs something in, and then the guitar comes back in. Nice. nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and that's things like that have happened a couple of times, or just like stepping on a cable and it comes out of it comes out of the pedal board, right. but we. Uh, we've gotten a lot better about that, about like zip tying uh, cables together to make sure that once it's in, it stays in and that kind of thing. No, Especially when the stages are smaller and you got to set up in front of the, the band that plays after you because then you have wires crossing each other and drums right. in front of drums. No, definitely. The more you do something, especially as a group or unit, you know, you, you find ways to be more efficient and... Uh, that's always that's always the fun part you know getting down mm-hmm. all the little things you got to do before you actually do what you do yeah um let's see don't too feel. oh that's what i was gonna say um <laughs> what other instruments do you play or what all instruments do you play um, well, everybody in the band kind of is a bit of a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, me, I mean, obviously guitar is the, my main thing, but, uh, all the piano and synths on the album, I recorded those. So my, you know, I played piano basically as long as I played guitar and, um, what I've been, I mean, you know, play bass and ukulele and pretty much any other stringed instrument I can pick up. Cause I, one of my jobs is a music teacher. So, right. um, I actually picked up drums cause, uh, I started teaching music, I think I was like 20 when I started like working for, for an actual music school. And they had a lot of drum students that, uh, and the schools, they hire lots of piano teachers and uh, a lot of guitar teachers, but there tends to be a lack with drum teachers. So uh, my boss asked me, he's like, hey, you know any, any drummers that can play other instruments? And I didn't really know any at the time. so. I ended up basically just hanging out at the store after my work hours and just practicing drums for a couple of months. And after a while, I was the drum teacher at the school. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that's one way to keep yourself useful, right? Or... <laughs> but, but yeah, everybody, everybody in the band is a little bit of a multi-instrumentalist. And we, um, we kind of bounce the ideas off of each other that way. And, um, yeah, because... You know the whole guitar, bass, drums, and vocals setup is great. That's you know that's the the heart and the spine of the rock band. But right, it, it, sometimes you got to add in these other flavors to really, really paint the picture that you're hearing in your mind. Because you know as as much as I love uh, you know bands like uh, Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue, um, there's sometimes I want to I got this inspiration from uh, Hans Zimmer or I got inspiration from. Oh, nice. uh, you know, some other, uh, you know, like a classical composer or something, if I'm listening to Moonlight Sonata. And actually, uh, we have a song there called Hopeless, which uh, most of the song is played on piano. And that, you know, is heavily inspired by Moonlight Sonata. So that was, uh, when you pull from different influences, it's kind of hard to stick to just the, the regular rock and roll setup. No, absolutely. No, and I and I like it when bands are able to introduce different element or different instruments, something you're not expecting, like, you know, like a violin or a cello or a flute or you know something different to kind of just give the music a little bit more dimension. Mm-hmm. So no, that's awesome if you you know doing that. I love it. Now, now during the course mm-hmm. of the early part of our interview, you mentioned quite a few different countries. Uh, how many different countries would you say you've visited now in Europe, or just all together? Um, well, I've, I've visited quite a lot myself in the past traveling, but um, as far as the tour goes, where we went to, we uh, we did a bunch of rehearsals and actually a couple shows before we went to the UK. We did that in Austria, and then uh, the whole calling tour was in the UK. Right. So basically that for most of the shows and then we did a show in france and then back to austria so aside aside from passing through um belgium we didn't we 
didn't visit a whole lot. That was the Anvil tour was going everywhere though. That was going to be Germany, France, Italy, um, the Netherlands, Switzerland. So, but that's coming up. So, I was say, <laughs> is there any country in particular that you're looking forward to going to? Um. Hmm. I wouldn't say there's a particular one because. Um, I mean, anytime we're playing a show and anytime there's there's an audience, it's always great. But what I am looking forward to in the future is actually when we uh, when we can finally start touring in the U.S. and in Mexico, because um, there's actually uh, quite a big uh, rock and roll and heavy metal scene in Mexico, especially around central area. And um, I mean, dude, just those crowds are so into the music, like. You know, you, like you've seen like a Mexican soccer game, right? Like yeah, how yeah, yeah they they're get. passionate. They're they're passionate. Yeah, they're the, they're the same. They're the same way at rock and metal concerts. Like wow. Like when the band's done playing, they're still out there shouting. They're shouting nice. the band's name. They they'll turn it into like an ole 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 ole. <laughs> turn it into a chant. And so, um, uh, once we finally like are like doing some more serious international tours, once we're the whole band is finally like you know living in the U.S. and yeah, you know, hopefully we'll have that all sorted out next year once the lockdowns are done. Um, you know, because we're we're already we've already started the process to get you know immigration forms and whatnot. It's just right. uh, and now that we're with the record company, it's it's going to work out, but it's just going to take time. Yeah. Um, but that's what I'm looking forward to is the band all living in the same area, getting to tour the states, and then you know eventually into Latin America. No, that sounds pretty cool. Now, is everybody planning to live in the L.A. area, or do they have different ideas? Well, um, definitely in, in California, that's the hope. I mean, Manuel loves it in Los Angeles. I right. Personally, I mean, it, I'm, it's probably just being spoiled. I grew up in Orange County, so like it's it's got the L.A. vibe, but it's a lot more laid back and yeah. a lot more spaced out. And the beaches are a lot nicer. So me personally, I love California, but I I don't like Los Angeles. Just anywhere outside the city is fine. Um, I actually lived I lived in Hollywood for about two years. Hated oh, wow. it. I, I had to for uh, school and work though. And then uh, after that, I moved to uh, East LA, and uh, I actually liked it a lot better out there. It was just not as much traffic. More there, I could actually park in front of my house. <laughs> All I think about is that uh, that movie, Born in East L.A. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> With the... Uh, Cheech Marin. Cheech Marin. That movie's crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's funny. East L.A. kind of gets a bad rap, but some right. parts of it are actually actually kind of nice. Oh, there's okay. a Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's the not-so-nice parts, and then there's the more uh, suburban neighborhood types. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Awesome. Gotcha. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play your song on our King of Hill tonight. And then uh, tomorrow, when I post the polls, it'll be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And plus, people will be voting during the show tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could just do one thing for us before we cut you loose for the rest of the night, if you could just say who you are, the band, and that you are watching Hellcast Radio. Okay. Um, so if I mess it up, can we do it again? Or Absolutely. I just want to make sure that if it's a one shot, I want to like prep. Okay. <laughs> no, one shot, that's it, Spencer. That's all you get. <laughs> all right, you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. This is Spencer Connolly from Living Dead Stars, and you're watching Hellcast Radio. Perfect. Perfect. See, you only needed one take. Yeah. yeah. Got all psyched up for it. I know, right? <laughs> oh, it was awesome having you on the show tonight with us. Oh, it was awesome being on the show. Thank you, Redlick. And uh, we will definitely be in touch. All yeah. right, Don't forget to good. get everybody to vote for your song. There you go. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and uh, the the vote is on Facebook or uh, through a website? Uh, no, it's uh, it'll be on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I'll be sure to uh, to vote and promote it. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we will keep in touch, and thanks again for having me on the show. No, Not thank a problem. You. you have yourself a great day. You too. All right, bye. 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 Cool, dude. All right. It was pretty cool.